changing a 202 year old form of government for another form of government, the mistakes alone are going to cost us in the millions and the consultants will be the ones that benefit from something like this. I have not seen one plan advanced by this body that addresses any of the cost benefit analysis of this particular proposal they, that they have submitted to us. And in fact, when you look at the Plain Dealers editorial, I found it amazing that they endorsed it before they even read it. It's, 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 it's very disturbing what I'm seeing happening here. I, I don't know that that's true, that they endorsed it without having read it, and that would surprise I me will, a great deal. I will but tell you for a fact that they asked me for a copy of the uh, plan after it was endorsed on the editorial pages. There are a number of people on that editorial board, including in addition to the one that you spoke to. But, um, Mr. Frost, um, could you address some of Mayor Brewer's concerns? Uh, <coughs> specifically, I think, this idea that... Um, that he didn't mention, that he mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. that changing the form of government won't change the people who are in government. Well, and let's tie them together, because Mayor okay. Brewer said something very insightful on the proof about economic development, for example, uh, being in the results. We used to be the third largest corporate headquarters in the country behind New York and Chicago. Since 1970, we've lost half a million people. Those people have already voted with their feet. This is an area that has tremendous assets and tremendous potential. It can be great again. There's a lot great about it right now. And I'm proud to be living here. But the proof is already there. And look, that's not about Commissioner Jones or uh, Judge Green, Judge Leland Green, the county recorder, both of whom are here today. Good to see you, Your Honor. It's not about the current office holders. It's not about, for example, uh, corruption uh, that is going on. I've been a critic of corruption in our county. But look, corruption, I'll be the first to acknowledge, is not the exclusive province of the Democratic Party or its office holders. Neither is reform the exclusive province of the Republican Party. This, these are things we have to work on together, and we can work on them better than we have been. And so the mayor pointing out that the proof is in the results, those are the results that we've seen over the last 35 or 40 years. So are you basically saying there's just got to be something better? What we have here is a, a plan that calls for greater efficiency, a more accountable and transparent government. Now, I heard what uh, Harriet Applegate said earlier about needing no, more inclusion, more input, uh, more involvement from the citizenry. I would say that the signatures of 80,000 people of this county to put this on the ballot speaks more loudly than the votes of two commissioners to put the alternative proposal on the ballot. Oh, oh, I, I think everybody wants to make a comment. So everybody in their, in their time. Mayor Zanotti, um, you wanted to get in before. And I, and I want to ask you to address very specifically the cost problem. What guarantees are there that this would be a more efficient form of government and that Cuyahoga County taxpayers would get more of their money's worth out of it? Well, I, I, I think it would be hard to envision uh, it would be how it couldn't be more efficient, how it could be less efficient than the current structure, because basically what you have I think is in politics, you have, anything is possible. Well, you have, so. 11, you have 11 elected officials, and those elected officials all have budgets, and they all report to one constituency, and that's the voters. So you have no ability to rein spending in in those. You have uh, 11 offices, 11 chiefs of staff. You have 11 human resources types of decision-making process. There's no centralization of all of that. When you take an elect, when you take a central financial officer and you, or chief financial officer, and you put the recorder and the auditor's department, which are now separate departments, you blend them into one department, you clearly are going to reduce the size of the government. But that doesn't happen by chance. There's a transition in the charter that there is to be a transition created, committee created, that will form the structure of the new government that will be created so when the people that are elected in 2010 start, they have it. But furthermore, Right now, you have three commissioners who make the decisions. In the new process, you will have an executive who proposes the budget and a council that has to approve the budget. And that's the checks and balances that aren't there today. And they're going to have to be able to, to manage the process and make it more streamlined. Harriet Applegate, you have a, a strong criticism of the county executive. Uh, you, you have said to, on my program that um, mm -hmm. there's too much power concentrated in that executive according to the charter written up by Mayor Zanotti's team. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why is that too much well, power? Well, it, it gives too much power to one person. And, and, and it, we know that doesn't address the corruption issues, as Mayor Brewer has so eloquently uh, spoken to. But it, it, the, 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 the county executive has... Uh, a concentration of powers that is, I think, even made more, worse by the fact that you've got 11 geographic districts 
um, the design, I, as I understand it, is for those 11, those office holders to be, you know, relatively um, low paid, relatively weak. They at best could be serve as an advisor to this very, very powerful executive who hires and fires and decides rates of pay, decide, and has but, tremendous but power. And and that alone is a dif is difficult when it comes to checks and balances. There are I, checks and balances now. And but the I mean the council in the in this charter that, that Mayor Zanotti and, and Prosecutor Bill Mason have put together. There, the county council would have subpoena powers, investigative powers, powers to um, to also approve nominations, but vote on if, vote on nominations but for only if eight council members vote for that. But they have to. You approve, have to have they a have super to majority. Directors, they have to approve directors. So to suggest that the county executive would be too powerful is to suggest that the mayor of Cleveland would be too powerful, or the mayor of any suburb would be too powerful, because this mayor form of government is is nationwide. The mayor of New York is a city three times the size of Cuyahoga County. I mean, I don't hear any claims that they need to change the form of government there because the mayor is too powerful. You have a mayor and you have a council. People don't want Mayor Bloomberg to run for a third term, but and that's something altogether different. don't have a county CEO in New York um, either. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is this. I think this this calling this executive a mayor is. I think it's more it's more akin to a CEO than it is to a mayor, and and I think there's a, a great amount of concern about uh, somebody who has that much power over that many over th that large a population. It's not the same as the uh, the different municipalities where their mayors and their city councils. It's a it's a super uh, government that has been layered over, uh, a, you know, lots of. Uh, current municipalities. But can, I ask you, can I ask you a question? If the if the Charter Review Commission goes forward and you're elected to it, and you're on there with say seven people from your slate and eight people from the other slate, mm -hmm. and the proposal that 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 review that that Charter Review comes comes up with includes a county council and a county executive form of government sim similar to what we see in Summit County. Will you support that if it comes through out of your process? Well, I'd, I'd have to see what the details are. I think the devil is always in the details, and you'd have to, we'd have to see what the people want. If we go you know, after public hearings and testimony and, and actually the public's input into what they want from their county, there's a whole bunch of different goals that people might have. The, the chief goal might be economic development. It might be more democracy. It might be human services, it might be jobs, it might be efficiency. We don't know what the people want. We can we can, we can only speculate at this time. And so I think a, a commission is necessary to find out what people really want and expect and need from their county government and then formulate something that is responsive to that. Mayor Brew, do you, do you agree with Harriet Applegate that we don't know what people want out of uh, their county government? Well, if you look at the petition drive, uh, I had a chance to uh, approach one of the petitioners that were out there, and they didn't tell us that this was this very elaborate plan to restructure government. Basically, they said, basically they said that uh, if you want to get rid of the people that are in the county commission and in corruption, then sign this petition. No, but, but, uh, that's, but the, the, that's not, I'm not asking about what the petition gathering, how the petition gathering happened. I'm, I'm asking, do you agree that, that after uh, a, a study out of, from Kathy Barber at John Carroll University, after a study in 2004, after the study that, um, that David Abbott uh, ran that was a, the, legislative, uh, the legislatively mandated right. uh, committee, including Mayor Judy Ross and Mayor Bruce Akers, who are here with us today. After that, after all of that input, we still don't know what, county, what the county voters want? In 95, when uh, after the collapse of SAFE, uh, uh, Mayor Kathy Barber was commissioned to go out and study. I think she said 65 people around the county showed up to participate in the hearings. There were a few people that participated in the most recent hearings uh, from the legislative side, and only this narrow body of individuals that are tied to uh, Mayor Zanotti's group participated in this discussion. Um, this is really not something that was well thought out, and I think that this is the real concern that I have as a resident of this community. They didn't go through the provisions in the revised code that deal with the authority of the prosecuting attorney under 309, under the sheriff under 311, and so forth and so on. Um, they didn't consider that the sheriff serves on the organized crime task force and that having a sheriff appointed by the county CEO diminishes that person's ability to <laughs> conduct independent investigations. There are no real strong provisions in this particular charter that addresses conflicts of interest that uh, would uh, surface and that have surfaced in government when you're dealing with politicians who are seeking endorsements and, and campaign funds from contractors doing business with the governmental entities that they serve.